I've been following the tutorials on the web to convert the Sun Off Touch switch to use the Apple HomeKit natively, but I find that this touch is not sensitive. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work, and especially at night, you have to feel through all the panel to find a hot spot that you can uh, press. And also, the mounting is having some structural problem. The plastic is too thin after you mounted it. Uh, the plastic uh, of the frame will bend and it bend in such a way that it won't fit nicely with the touch panel. That means it's disconnected from the touch panel. So I have to put in two acrylic boards at the base to strengthen it and I find it very inconvenient and ugly. Uh, on the web they say you can put some plastic films in between the sensor and the wall plate but it didn't work for me. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. So I'm going to uh, replace it with another son of product. I prefer the hard switch, hard button than the touch buttons. So we'll be using another product of Sunoff to make this happen. So this is the Sunoff Duo. It allows you to control two switches that you can connect to your lights or to a fan. And it works well for my toilet washing room, which has the fan and the light. So we'll be using these connectors to connect um, connect the lamps together. And this is the program button. And let's take it off. See what's inside. Can get it off easily using a screwdriver. So this is how it looks. Uh, you have the button pins to control the lamps. So you can extend this to your hot button later on. And then on this side, you have the terminals for the mains electricity that comes in here. And then the terminals to your lights that goes in here. Okay. And I also intend to add a motion sensor so I can detect when someone is going into the restroom so I don't need to press the button and the lights will automatically turn on when I go into the restroom and it will stay on for I think five minutes and then if it detects any movement it will continue to keep the lights on if there's no more movement then after five minutes the lights will be turned off And that's how I, I will try to DIY this. Let me uh, take off the board. Take off the circuit board. take a look at the back of the circuit board so this is the uh, ESP8285 oh, this way so this is the ESP8285 you can see it more clearly now 8285 and it's connected out to the rest of the circuit board. What we need to find is if there are any spare pins we can use to control the motion sensor. Because most of the pins are already used for the programming of the chip 
flash upload here the VCC the receive transmit and the ground and the buttons here and also the relay they all occupy some pins so I don't know whether I can still find some pins and it's usable okay if I couldn't find a pin that is usable I may take it directly from the chip from the CPU here the controller here through some very careful soldering I intend to use this type of uh, hard buttons to, to mount on the wall plate to uh, turn on the light and the fan and then at the back I uh, will mount this this is it's, it's a bit too big to mount horizontally or vertically so I will mount it diagonally okay so it will still be able to fit into the hole on my wall okay, and terminals will be here okay, I can check out this put this in like this so I think it will fit mm, or better over here because the the pins will be here And I may show the some uh, socket here so I can do the programming easily. Research on the market and I found this SR602 motion sensor which is a passive infrared PIR motion sensor. Mm. Very good quality and it can also support 3.3 volts uh, for the ESP8266. Not many motion sensors out there can support 3.3 volts this is one of them and you can see you have the uh, jumper there for the positive 3.3 volt negative which is to connect to ground and then the out to connect to a pin of the ESP8266 so now let's do a program simple program to test it I'm uh, using a simple code to test the motion sensor if you look at the code uh, I put on the LED pin 13 the motion sensor is the input pin number 4 and the setup is very simple just set up the input and output set up the serial monitor and then do a digital read on the input pin which is the pin 4 GPIO4 if the value is high that means we detected a motion someone passed through the motion sensor and then we output a load to turn on the LED otherwise if the digital read input from GPIO4 is low then we output a high to turn off the LED okay and and this thing will be delays for a few seconds so we can see the LEDs going on and off this is my setup motion sensor is quite small and the good thing is it only needs 3.3 volts to power unlike its brothers which are bigger they need to be modified to work on 3.3 volts and sometimes very unstable so better buy this SR602, small and also very reliable. So when my hand move in front of it, it will detect the motion. If I stop moving, it will not detect the motion. Now let's move. I'm now uh, three feet away and it's still sensing the right motion. Okay, let me move to uh, six feet away let's see what happens still quite sharp still sensing the motion ok 
Okay. So as long as I raise my hand, it will sense my motion. I will be using this type of buttons for the wall plate. So I need to drill a hole big enough for the button to pass through. And I choose this drill pit. And I drill two holes. Next, let's put in the buttons. We will use these two tactic buttons for our light switch and fan switch. Next, let's fit in the board to see if it lines up properly. Now we can use the hot glue gun to secure it in place. So I've glued the buttons to the wall plate and then connected to this jumper um, which can be plugged to the jumper on the sun off dual switch if you allow the button to be used just follow the pin layout uh, printed on the circuit board you have the ground button one button zero just follow that and then for the flip side i have soldered the gpi04 to another jumper here and then this jumper connects to the same firmware upload jumper. So we have the ground here, the VCC 3.3 volt here, and then this data pin, which is coming from GPIO4. Then I will be using this thick wire to connect to the SR602 PIR motion sensor. And then this, this side will plug into the circuit board here. like this then we can uh, now do some testing okay, we fired the sun off dual R2 switch to buttons and to this motion sensor so before we test the real thing Before we test the real thing, let's try to use the Arduino program here to test whether the motion sensor works. Okay, so we need to compile it, and before we can compile it, we need to turn the sum of switch into the programming mode. To do that, we need to have one hand holding the button zero, while the other hand Connecting the USB power, and then you can release it. So this is the button. Okay, let's try. So I can hold this pin zero button and then connect the USB. So it works. Oh no, not this one. This button. So let's try again. Hold the button zero, press and hold, and then push it in. Okay, then you can start the uh, serial monitor, and then you can click the upload button. We will upload. Then when you finish upload, because we don't have the reboots on the board, so we need to unplug the USB and plug in again. Then the program should load. And we can now test our motion detector. So let's move this around. So this is the motion detector. This is the LED when the motion is detected. And you can also see the serial output. OK, 
Okay, let me do a motion detection. So motion is detected and the LED is lighting up. Let's try again. LED is lighting up for a few seconds. See here, that's the LED. This one here. Okay, so motion detection seems to work. Now we can uh, go to the real thing, the HomeKit architect, uh, HomeKit accessory architect. Let's do the upload of that firmware. Okay, after wiring up the Sun of Dual R2 switch with the buttons and the motion sensor here, we we'll need to test it uh, using a simple program. So there's an Arduino program that I've written. I will put the link uh, to my GitHub so you can download this very simple testing program. It will use the built-in LED of the Sun of switch here, this button, uh, this LED, uh, to test the motion sensor. So when there's motion detected, the LED will light up and then it will, uh, it will shut down. Okay, so let's do the upload of the program. And because we don't have the auto programming pins uh, in the sun off switch, what we need to do is we need to connect the USB while we press the button zero. So this is the button zero. So we need to connect the USB port while we press the button zero. So let's press the button zero first and then we connect the USB. Okay, done. Now we can uh, do the upload, program upload, clicking the upload button. Okay, it's, it's uploading. Okay, it's done uploading, it's trying to reboot, but actually it won't reboot because we don't have the reboot pin. We don't have the reset pin in the sun off switch. So we have to again unplug the USB and plug it on to reset the power. And then you should see the program running. Okay, motion ended. Now we can start some motion by blocking the sensor and we find motion detected and motion ended. You also notice that the LED is lighting up for a few seconds when we have a motion. Your motion can be as far away as a few 10 feet away, so this is very sensitive. Okay, so after testing it, uh, we can now go on to really program it with the HomeKit accessory architect. Uh, you can go back to my video that I installed the single switch Sun of Basic yeah, go through the same step. So let's repeat that. So first we have to shut down the Arduino first, otherwise the serial port will be always in use and we can't program it. Then we need to bring up the the HAA JSON configurator. Son of standard switch and let's click use config. Okay, and then you find that it will load the LED pin 13 and it will load the first button, button 0, which will control the relay on GPIO 12. Now we need to add another accessory, another switch. So click Add Accessory and select Switch. We need to add the side click input. Okay, this time the pin number is 9, so you can type in 9 for the button. Okay, then we select the for the single activation. We can just pretty much copy the, the one for GPIO pin 0. And then we can add the digital output on stage. It is the Controlling the relay connected to GPIO pin 5. OK. 
okay and then at the off stage p5 again and it's active low for the off let's double check yeah so the bottom one relay one is off is active low so we just copy that off is active low okay, and then the last accessory we need to add is the motion sensor of course let's add the motion sensor we need to uh, set this timing how many seconds we need to wait when a motion is detected so we have more time to activate the, the lights so I put in six seconds here okay and then we only need to sense it we don't need to output so we only need to figure out the input we need to add the enable state input and this GPIO pin 4 is connected to the motion sensor so I think that's all we need okay, this is the JSON file we generated so we have to highlight all the text and then command C to copy it And next, we need to clean up our terminal. Okay, what we do now, we will again turn the turn the button into a program mode by pressing the button 0 and insert the USB port and then we need to run the clear script clear sum of dot shell run the script to clear the memory first because it might have the previous memory of the home kit configuration which will uh, stop it from pairing again Okay. Then the second time we will need to press the button again and put it in fresh mode again. This time we will need to do the the burn command, burn some of the shell. This time we will burn a new firmware to allow it to put up in a configuration screen. Okay, so now it's finished. Again we need to unplug the USB and plug it in again and let's go to the full screen so we'll need to look at the Wi-Fi and see whether we find an access point let's start with HAA okay so we find one already this one okay so let's click on it this is the home kit device that we just programmed and it will pop up and show you the configuration screen okay so we have to command V to copy uh, to paste back what we just copied from the configurator okay let's double check if everything is fine okay and then we need to search for our Wi-Fi access point at home which is this one for me click on the knock to select it and then put in the password make sure you put in the password correctly otherwise you will not put up okay. and then lastly click on save and send so wait for the window to close by itself don't close it yourself otherwise you will not finish the work Okay, the windows is closed. Now is the long waiting time of around five minutes to let this SunOff switch download the, the full firmware and uh, reconfigure it using the JSON file that we just input. So we'll come back in five minutes. 
So after waiting for five minutes, and at the end of that, we saw the LED light flashing. That means firmware is completed loading. After that, we can try to use the iPhone, start the home kit, press this plus sign to add a new device. And then you have to click the last button. I don't have a setup code or cannot scan. Okay, and then once you click that, you'll be able to see they find a, a device called HAA dash something something, right? which is the device uh, from the HomeKit accessory architect firmware that we just loaded to the Sun of Geo switch, which is controlled by the ESP8266. So let's click it to start adding. It is said it is not identified. It's not certified device by Apple, so do you still want to add? Yes. So now we need to input the setup code, which is available on the exterior of the device. But now for our homemade home kit, we will need to get it from the HAA website. The link is in the YouTube video. So it is 02182017, or you can use your camera scan the QR code. So for now, let's. Uh input one by one zero two one eight two zero one seven okay this is the setup code i think you can customize and change it if you don't like this setup code or want to keep it a secret for your house okay then continue it's trying to connect to the switch it will take one or two minutes okay now the screen come up which room you want to put it in. I want to put it in the master room and then continue. This is the name of our device. Uh, if you don't like the name, you can change it. Change it to something you know about. Hmm. I think I want to make it a light, something like that continue and then this is a light added and now it detected the motion sensor so let's continue to add it to the master room name of the motion sensor uh, let's make it the rest room I mean the, the washing room okay added and lastly it has connected to the the second switch and I'll name it the exhaust fan okay so it's a fan continue finished so now we've finished configuring the lights uh, the green LED and the fan the red LED. You can see it easier this way. So the fan is the red LED. The light is the green LED. So after we finish testing this, we can test the motion sensor. Motion sensor is this one. So if I put a finger here, uh, to here. So now we can test the motion sensor, which is this one. So if I put a finger here, you see the motion sensor has been activated and then it's gone. And I put my hand here again, activated and gone. I set the delay to six seconds. So it won't repeat uh, too quickly. Okay, now we can do some automation. So how do we do automation? You can press the motion sensors icon and then add on the add, um, automation. The automation says when you detected something activated, the sensor is activated, someone moved in the room. And then next step, which switch you want to turn on, which fan, which light you want to turn on. So I want to turn on the washing room light. 
I click on this one and then next step so when you the motion sensor is activated turn on the washing room light you have to click say you want to turn it on yeah so turn on the light when the motion sensor is activated and then how long you want to keep the lights on if that person didn't move again right so if he's going to do something in the washing room chances are he may not make big body movement so we need to set a, a delay say uh, two minutes or one minute let's go with one minute first okay, so after we detected the sensor is activated someone moved into the room we will turn on the light for one minute unless he moves again then the light will continue to turn on because this will be re-triggered okay so this is now done you can go back to the home screen so now if I move my hand on the sensor the sensor is activated and then the lights will be turned on you see the restroom light washing room light is turned on and then it, even though the motion sensors is now deactivated no one moved the lights will still remain on for one minute let's wait and see whether it will turn off after one minute but if in between that one minute someone moves in again or moves out again the light will turn on again it's now past one minute let's reactivate it again okay, it's now reactivated and this time I will keep moving and see what will happen after one minute so this is how I install it in my restroom this is the light this is the fan the exhaust fan you can't see it this is the motion sensor so I programmed the motion sensor so when I get into the washing room within a minute the motion sensor will turn on the lights yeah light is on and then after I left for three minutes motion sensor will turn off the lights okay motion sensor turns off the light that's all for today thanks for watching if you like my video please share it with your friends and subscribe thank you and have a happy new year and merry christmas